I'm Warren Sprouse. I'm the host of the Bible Forum that meets every Sunday evening from 8 to 10 p.m. right here on our website, thebibleforum.net. And tonight we're talking about the 17 signs that your church is becoming secular. Is it teaching that the Bible is not relevant? Teaches that the Bible is not inspired? It might be coming secular. Because the Bible says of itself that it is God-breathed, that it is a word from God. Are you using books instead of the Bible in your Bible studies? I heard just this evening someone talked about going to a church and the so-called pastor stood up and instead of a sermon, he read from a Dr. Seuss book. Oh, the places you go. There were churches and some in this town who were using uh, excerpts from the TV show Mayberry RFD or the Andy Griffith show. It was the same thing uh, in their Sunday school classes. Now, I don't know who was marketing that. Uh, it might have been the Southern Baptist Convention, for all I know, because the churches were Southern Baptists that were doing it that I knew of. But what kind of books do you use in your Bible study? Are you teaching that there's more than one way to God? Are you teaching people, are they teaching you that you can come to God, but you don't have to go through Jesus? You can go to heaven, but you don't really have to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Are people in your church becoming embarrassed by Jesus? Do they not want to put too, too much emphasis on Jesus and on uh, that he's the only way to salvation? In your church, are they teaching you that the, there's no such thing as absolute right and wrong? That it's okay to be a little bit this way or a little bit that way? You don't have to be so holy. I mean, we live in a fallen world, and the people in this world, they drink, they cuss, they smoke, they do crazy things. They take things that don't belong to them. They, they, you know, they're just not careful about a whole lot of stuff. Is your church saying, you know, that's not a problem? Are you trying to be careful in your church not to offend anyone? Are you trying to lessen somehow the impact of the Word of God, biblical truth, so that people aren't really offended. You know, you can get a little crazy, go a little too far with this, this Jesus stuff. Are your preachers standing up there moralizing, telling you how to raise your family? how to get along with your husband or your wife, how to handle your finances, how to have peace in your life, not worry so much. Are they moralizing instead of presenting Christ-centered messages? You know, if you go to a church where the fellow standing up there, they call him a pastor, but excuse me, a pastor is a shepherd, a teaching shepherd, and in these mega churches, you know, you, you haven't seen that pastor in your home in I don't know how long. Are these guys standing up there and opening the Bible and working through several verses and showing you how those things work and what they mean and tying that all back to who and what you are as a Christian? Is that happening? Or is it just a lot of fun and a lot of moralizing? In your church, do they approve of homosexuality? More and more churches are. Big churches, small churches, uh, and some so-called conservative churches. They don't have a problem with homosexuality. It's being normalized all over the world. It's being normalized in the church. We're going to be talking about that in this uh, issue of the Bible form later on. But the reality is the Bible comes out 
very, very strongly against it, saying that homosexuality being accepted in a society is the very last rung on a, led, a ladder of destruction. Did you know that? It's not really an option. Does your church approve of women preachers, women elders? More and more churches are doing that, in part because there's not a lot of men. As long as I've been on the planet, that's been one of the complaints, that churches are, are run by the women. Now, I've been doing this, I've been pastoring for over 40 years. I've never had a church run by women. I've always had churches that attracted men. And men got involved and did what they had to do. Now, the women see more. Oftentimes, the women have a lot of good ideas, things men ain't thought of yet. But it doesn't mean that they get to be the leader, spiritual leader. They could do a lot of leading kinds of things, but not spiritual leadership. Is your church embracing that? Is your church holding back when it comes to the sins of the society? Not going to mention those things? Is your church in, invested somehow in psychology? Do they not have a problem with psychology? Thinking that it, it has, is an authority on human nature? That if you have an emotional problem, you have a, a disorder, a mental disorder, that you really need to go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist? Do they teach you that sort of stuff? Or do they open the Bible and show you what is really going on here? I have a website, trybiblicalcounseling.net. I've been doing biblical counseling for over 40 years. And there isn't a psychologist, psychiatrist in the world can answer the question. What is your mind? You have a mental disorder. What's your mind? They say it's your brain. It's all about brain chemistry. It's all about damage in the brain. It's all about the way things fire, carry on. That's why you're depressed. That's why this, what? The Bible doesn't say anything like that. The Bible does not call your brain the mind. But aside from that, if your brain is your mind, then you are truly a victim. If your brain is not working correctly, even a little bit, it's running your life. And you're no longer a sentient creature. Who knew? We are all victimized by seven pounds of gray matter. Is it seven pounds? It's ounces, I don't know. Are you using politically correct terms in your, bio, in your church? Is your pastor doing that from the pulpit? Do they talk about your partner instead of your husband or your wife? Do they condemn Christians as homophobes because they don't want to embrace the homosexual lifestyle or, or give credibility to it? Do they say it's okay for a, a woman to kill her baby in the womb? Abortion is just another reproductive right. Are they doing things like that? Is going to church a, a good social habit? Is that what it's about? Is prayer a last resort? Well, we've done everything we can do now. That all that's left is prayer. Is that what your church teaches? Do you have missionaries? Now, I don't mean do you support a missionary agency, but do you have missionaries? Do you have men and women you've seen, touched, smelled? They come to your church. You know who they are. You know their children. You send money to help them, not some big impersonal organization. Are the divorce statistics in your church as common as they are in the general population? There was a time in evangelical circles where evangelicals were divorcing at the same rate as people outside the church. 
This goes back about 20 or so years ago. And somebody did a study to find out what was going on. You know what they learned? Oh, you're going to love it. They found out that the evangelical pastors were divorcing more than their congregation was, statistically. Does your church embrace, accept evolution as a, a viable answer, alternative, uh, when it comes to origins? Or do they take a stand against it? 17 things that point to the possibility that your church actually may be coming secular. You know what secular is? It isn't Christian. 